cards for your grandson. Excuse me. You need more than eight. You need to give me a five or so, because people's asking me and I'm giving them eight. Yeah. Because somebody asked me the other day, they said, is that that young boy? I said, yeah. They said, I need a card. Say crank up and go. Good morning. Good morning. I want to say something. We don't have to start at 11 o'clock. If the choir's in there before 11, y'all want to sing a song, just sing a song. And that way there, when they come in, if you need that, we can start. But just sitting around right waiting until 11 when the choir's there, we're going to stop that, okay? Okay. So in the choir, I'll put you on notice, okay? Congregation, he's putting you on notice. <laughs> um, it's always good if you can come in a parking lot and hear him singing. So we're going to, hey, we start early. When, we, if, when the choir's out there, John Brown, we're going to start singing, okay? Good to see Brother Nathan back with us today. He's been sick for a little while. Good to see him. I tell you. <coughs> He looks the way he looks, the way he dresses, he looks like he's ready to preach. I tell him that several times, he looks like a preacher. So Nathan, sometimes the call comes late in life, so you just keep that in mind, okay? <laughs> okay, okay. Got a young man there at the back named Blake. He helped us yesterday build a, a deck for someone and got to uh, see him, get to know him. Good to have him with us today, so... Uh, for those that are visiting with us, we just thank you for being here this morning with us. Keep your bulletins handy. Now, don't forget, next Sunday, uh, after church, we're going to have a hamburger and hot dog 
uh, dinner back here in the back. Uh, we're looking forward to that. We've been doing that for the last few years, uh, celebrating the 4th. So uh, you can come and uh, stay and fix your hamburger and hot dog and all the trimmings that go along with it. I'm sure there'll be some sweets back there. So uh, just make plans to, to stay for, for that. So we're looking forward to that next Sunday. Vacation Bible School, July the 15th. Uh, from nine to three, uh, tell your friends about it. Now, you little ones, be sure to tell your friends that we're having vacation Bible school. And uh, today we have a business meeting right after church. I will try not to keep you too long with my sermon today. If you hadn't already looked, it might be an interesting topic. I told Jerry yesterday they might fire me today. So, but it's something that I think we need to, to think about what's going on in this uh, world that we live in and some bad things are happening. So uh, please um, uh, stay uh, for the business meeting if you possibly can. Uh, I don't know of any, anything else. Brenda, I think she's got an announcement next. So come on, Brenda. So we just wanted to thank everybody that gave us money, that brought stuff, and every time we would put something in there, we think, you know, I hope they can use this. I hope these socks fit. I hope this toe bogging fits. So I just wanted y'all to know we are finished with that project. Now it's up to whoever's going to take it. So thank you to everybody. <laughs> I'm going to pray in a little bit, so go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> okay, take your hand, put some turn. 107. Love lifted me. Please stand. 107. <laughs>
shirt name. <laughs>
and last up at the cross. 255, please stand. that you turn with me to Proverbs chapter 7. Proverbs chapter 7. 
I had planned to read all 27 verses, but it may take a little longer than I anticipated. I can read it fast enough, but I'm just going to pick up a few verses here. Those that will, let us stand while we read this portion of God's Word. This is Solomon speaking here. My son, keep my words and lay up my commandments with thee. Keep my commandments and live and my law is the apple of the eye. Bind them upon thy fingers, write them upon the table of thy heart. Verse five, that they may keep thee from the strange woman from the stranger which flatters with her words. May God add his blessing to this portion of the reading of his word. You may be seated.
This is a sermon that uh, I really prefer not to preach, but it is a growing problem in our nation. It's really gotten out of hand and um, don't look like it's going to get any better. Um, I know we got a business meeting and I'll try to put this in gear. And, but I do want you to pay close attention this morning. Before we get started, let us pause for a moment of prayer. Heavenly Father, we invite thy presence. We ask that you speak to our hearts here this morning. Our hearts may need to be cleansed this morning because of sin. And Lord, we know in your word if we confess our sins, you are faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, just be with us today, for we ask it in Christ's name. Amen. Of all the places to read about sex, the Bible is full of sex. It is incredible to find out that there was so much sex going on in the Bible. All you have to do is turn to Songs of Solomon, chapter 1, verses 13, chapter 2, verses 6, and chapter 4, verses 5 through 9 and 11. Now, I know that some of you are trying to flip them pages, so we'll stop there, okay? Yes, the Bible is full of sex. The news stands has a lot of sex on it. You go to the local grocery store and there's sex being uh, sold there. It's full of sex. Television is full of sex scenes. Sex is now so important that most of the programs now has got those that lives a different lifestyle to get us to accept these changes. In Virginia, uh, you can't, in some areas, they don't want you to call a boy a boy, they want you to call him a person. They don't want you to call a girl a girl, they want you to call her a person. They're trying hard as they can to redefine human beings. It's a poor thing when drag queens now are allowed to come in and read to our little kids. So at an early age, they will accept this type of lifestyle. And that's what all that's about, folks, is to for them as a little child accept this type of lifestyle. I've been through Hamlet a, a number of times down there close to Burger King and uh, I, I've seen people dressed like this. I've seen boys with the hair all fixed up and high heel shoes. And I just shake my head. They're trying to encourage our little kids, it's okay. If you want to change from a boy to a girl, it's okay, you can. Sometimes I think I'm living in the twilight zone. I can't believe what's going on in the world. The next thing you're going to hear, a little boy is going to come home from school and he goes, say, Mama, I want to be a cow. <laughs> well, go ask your dad and see what he says. And, if, uh, and then go by your sister's room because she's now a vampire. <laughs> This is how ridiculous we're getting. Sex is everywhere you go. Just look at the beer commercials. A beer commercial usually have pretty girls in two-piece bathing suits with their cleavers as showing. Because that's going to help sell beer. I've always wanted to make a beer commercial. Really, I don't drink, but I've always wanted to make one. I want to get a lady about six axe handle wide with a two-piece bathing suit on. Now try to imagine that. 
And then I like for her to get a, a beer bottle and stick it between her cleavages and bend back and drink it. <laughs> now that'll sell. Because you see, when we look at these young people having a good time, they show in a lot of skin. You see, the sex creeps in like that. The devil is smart. He's cunning. It's just something that's going on. And I reckon these girls are girls you don't know no more. It might be a man that looks like a girl. But they're all the time fixing this stuff to drink the devil's juice. But now it's really getting bad. You know, now we have what we call phone sex. It's been around for a few years. Wow. Phone sex. I read where a man spent over a thousand dollars talking dirty to what he thought was a woman. They had agreed to meet somewhere and they did and when he got there it was a man that sounded like a woman. I guess it was the wrong number, I guess. But can you believe that? That you can sit and talk nasty to some person on the phone. Boy, we really gone crazy, haven't we? For two dollars a minute, you can do that. And if you think phone sex is bad, now we have sex toys. Now this is going to be an X-rated sermon, I'll tell you that now. But we have sex toys. Some you can plug in to a wall outlet and enjoy yourself. Some runs on batteries you can take to work and use them while you're working. You might hear a giggle every now and then. You might wonder what's going on with that person. But yeah, this has what's happening into our world. America has a sex problem. Sex sales. Now for some time, a drug company, Pfizer, had come up with a very famous drug to help men. And these men went from singing precious memories to start singing one of Gene Autry's phone, famous country cowboy song, Back in the Saddle Again. <laughs> now this is where we at now. America has a sex problem. I've done some research on this and it's disturbing. Porn has been a problem in our country for years. The sale of pornographic material is in the billions with a B. There's billions and billions of dollars into this. Drawings in the Egyptian tomb bears how long pornography has been around. With the advent of the internet, sex acts, sex scenes, can be pulled up with just the touch of your finger. Oh yeah, just the touch of your finger. There is a very, very, very dark side that is troubling in this industry that you may not be aware of. There is a, a, a it's not a porn site but it has to do with a lady that had been involved in the porn industry. And she was on the verge of killing herself. She said that I'm useless, I'm worthless, I'm just a piece of junk. My whole life has been this way, I've got no reason to live. And somebody shared Christ with her. And she got saved. And she started a program helping these people that wants to get out of this industry. Did you know that in the sex industry, in the porn business, that the number one suicide group of people are the porn people? 
They kill themselves more than any other group of people. I go to this website often because she does have a lot of uh, good things on there, but I will tell you, she, she don't beat around the bush, and it may be a little strong for some people, but she's dealing with people that's been in the dark business for some time. So she, she's pretty tough about this. But she had five of her close friends that was active in this stuff kill themselves in one week. One week she lost five of her friends who died without Christ because they said they was nothing but a piece of meat to these people. The family had rejected them. Nobody cared nothing about them, so they go into this business. And, and, and Satan, uh, I'm sure, shows a, a real rosy picture. But in the end, that's usually what happens. Did you know that every minute, 30,000 people are watching porn on the Internet? This is from the Department of Justice. You can go on there sometime and pull this up. I... Uh, it, it's, it's amazing. And these other sites too, she has one too. But 30,000 people every minute is watching porn on the internet. Did you know that every minute $4,000 a minute is being spent on porn and other things? $4,000 a minute. Don't you think we got a sex problem in our country? You know, God was the one that invented sex. He said it was good between a man and a woman who were married. Did you know that every second people are typing in the word adult in search engines? Just type in adult. I want Linnell to hit adult so she can tell me what's going on in this stuff. But they said, all you got to do is type in the, see, my spelling is terrible. <laughs> I have to ask them, how do you spell this? I don't know why. I, I'm so brilliant, yet I can't spell. <laughs> but you can hit certain things on it, and it takes you straight to a porn site. $4,000 a minute. All you got to do is hit adult. Did you know that 42 million Americans regular visit porn sites? Either at home or at work. Now how do they do it at work? Don't, they, don't the boss man walk around every now and then? I mean, I, I work with some, some, some good men and women that was, had a little authority. If they would have caught you doing that, well, you'd have, you'd have disappeared off the face of the earth. But 42 million Americans visit porn sites regular. Oh, this is something terrible. Did you know that one third of porn viewers are women? Now that's kind of hard to swallow, isn't it? That a third of them are women. Did you know the favorite time of the year for viewing porn? Thanksgiving Day. Did you know the most popular day of the week for viewing porn? Sunday. They're not in church. The sex industry has the, um, the, the biggest suicide rate of all of the industry. And this is looked at as an industry. Young boys and girls leave home sometime because the mother and father is too strict or too religious. You're just too hard on me. I can't do nothing. I can't do this. I can't watch TV. I can't listen to the radio. I can't wear the kind of school clothes that my friends wear. And then they leave home and they wonder why. The first chance they get to, to go to work in the public, they turn wild. Because they've never been around nobody. They don't, they don't get to, to, to see and, and enjoy things. And then parents wonder why they, they leave home. Some of these boys and girls, they run away from the home the first chance they get. And you know where they end up going first? 
usually to bus stations. And did you know that's where all the predators go to look for these kids, these young kids that's left home? I found that on a police thing where the police, you know, they constantly have to look for these kids. And, and they found out that, they, that these predators, they can spot them. And immediately they offer them a place to stay, a roof over their head, spending money. And they promise they can make a lot of money. Well, they do, but not for them. It's for, it's for the pimps. And the first thing they normally do when a girl says, yeah, I think I'll go there and stay. The first thing that, she, that happens to her, she's gang raped. First thing, that's the number one thing they do. They gang rape them. And then they start shoving drugs down their throat. Because you see, the key is to get them dependent on drugs so they, they can't go nowhere. They have to come back. And after all of that, they give them a good beating. They beat them up. They get fear in them. Now you try to leave. See what's going to happen. I, worked with, I went to school with the president of the Hells Angels. <laughs> and he told me a lot of stuff that they did. Probably didn't share that with a lot of people. I got to know them real good. He said, I'm going to tell you something. If the churches don't want them, we'll take them. And he said, we'll put them to work. And we'll put them on the streets. They go out and prostitute. And we tell them how much money they better bring home. And if they don't bring it home, they get cigarette butts and put on them. That sends the message to the other girls. And most of them at that time when he was telling me this, he said, Carl, they would have to make a $1,000 a night. We don't care how they make it, but they better not come home without it. And that's the kind of lifestyle that these kids sometimes run away. Did you know these 10,000 kids are missing now? I don't know where they're at. And bless Patty, the president's got the border open. We don't know how many of those young girls have been raped and murdered. We don't know. We have no record of it. And not only that, some of them have been caught up in the sex industry. They come into this country and they get them. They promised them the American dream, and the American dream to them is sex and drugs. It's a terrible thing that goes on, and we are not doing nothing about it. We got to, and I, hey, I don't care if he's a Democrat or a president, if it's wrong, it's wrong, folks. And we got a president and a bunch of people in Washington that's not paying that attention. Can you imagine a little five year old girl getting raped? I mean, we got some animals out there. Another thing that bothers me, we put all this stuff on Facebook when our kids are doing great. I mean, I've talked to some people about it. I wish they wouldn't do it, but I'm going to tell you something. You keep putting your little children on there in a pedophile. They love Facebook. And they try their best to find out where they live at. And maybe I can catch them unaware. Gone. They are everywhere. I mean, these pedophiles are everywhere. And they're constantly looking for an easy target. And here we are putting them on the internet, putting them on Facebook, and not realizing that they're watching. There's, I, I, it's just a mess, folks. We have a sex problem in our country. I remember when I was at Bethel, Homecoming. Guy showed up. I didn't know who he was. But Ronnie Hawks was there at the time. It was a big, had a big crowd. We always had a big crowd at homecoming. He came up to me. He said, Carl, you see that guy back there? I said, yeah. He's a pedophile. He said, I'm going to tell you what's going to happen. He said, a kid's going to get up and, you know, they always got to go to the bathroom. He said, the kid's going to get up and go to the bathroom and he's going to start coughing. Because he's got to go outside. But I've got him covered. Sure enough, the kid got up, went to the bathroom. <coughs> I said, my Lord. Sound like he had the Hong Kong flu. He got up and went out the back door and Ronnie was right behind him. We had some little girls up there. Went out to the fellowship hall and we was 
having a big dinner and everything. And this guy was out there up under a tree looking at these little girls. Finally, finally, he went up to him and he said, listen, he said, go home. You're not wanted here. And I found out later on, they say that this is a disease that can never be cured. Now, I don't know about calling it a disease, but he got pushed off because he was looking at these little girls. But they everywhere. And we don't do a lot of justice and a lot of help when we advertise success of our children because these guys, they love little girls and little boys. But these runaways, they realize that they're the property of these pimps. And then when they get older, let me tell you something. As these ladies that has been in these porn movies for years, after a while, it shows. They're not as pretty as they used to be. So they have to go out on the street on their own to make a living, pimping, I mean prostituting. And then somebody comes along, do you really want to make some good money? Oh yeah, they always want to make money. Well, we got a chance for you to make a lot of money, probably more than you've ever made in your life. Are you interested? Well, naturally they are. Well, see, they own their own. They, they, I mean, they got no education. They can't hold a job. Nobody would hire them because they don't, they, they, that's all they've ever done. They take a trip to Mexico. And some fat cat millionaire who's got all this money is there. And it's called a snuff film. Now, you know what that is? The person is engaged in a sexual act. A man comes up with a knife and he cuts her throat. They want to see the fear of her face or his face as they really kill them. They pay big bucks to see that. Now isn't that something? And it's not only men getting killed, it's I mean, women, it's men too. They would even show them trying to get away. Please, please, because they realize what's getting ready to happen because they know that this stuff goes on. But them millionaires like to see what it looks like in the face of somebody that's getting ready to be murdered. They take their bodies out there in Mexico and I guess feed them to dogs or whatever. But this is the sex industry. It's sick, it's terrible. And there's been hundreds, probably thousands, that has met their end that way. Folks, it, we've got problems right here. We got prostitutes. Matter of fact, I seen one this morning. I said, isn't that something? I said, I'm on the way to church this morning and there's a prostitute. Folks, why did I say preach on this this morning? Because I want you to know that it is a problem. And just about all these world empires, especially Rome, they collapse because most of the Senate that they had them senators was gay, orgies everywhere, and they collapsed. And America is heading down that same road. Uh, Solomon is telling his son here, we see the seriousness of his word. He said, this is serious, son. I want you to pay attention to me. And then we see the soundness of his wisdom in verse 2. Solomon could speak about this stuff because he was involved in this stuff. As he got older, he said, this wasn't worth it. And then we see the strength of his writing because even today we need to read this and get familiar with it to warn our little ones about this world. I think, hey, you say this is too much for a little kid. No, it's not. 
These kids today are 10 times as smarter than we were when we was in school. They really are. They've they, they seen it all. Can you imagine how many murders they've seen on TV? If you talk about sex, oh, that's too powerful. Well, folks, I'm going to tell you, we have a sex problem in our nation. And a lot of people that gets involved in this type of activity dies. Now, aren't you glad that you saved? Aren't you glad that the Holy Spirit warns you of things like this? Don't look at that. Don't go there. Listen to mama. Listen to papa. Listen to grandma. Why do we want to listen to them? Because they've been around. You know, I hate to think none of us has grown in wisdom over our lives. You know, we're all getting a little bit up there, you know. Don't you ask me how old I am no more. None of your business. And I like to think that I've got some type of wisdom to, to, to share with my grandchildren because they live in a world so much different than ours. It's completely different. And I think about what their future is going to be like for long. When you can go to school and, hey person, how you doing? <laughs> is the drag queen coming today? We got a person that's a cow now. We got vampires in school. Crazy, isn't it? I'm so glad that I'm saved. I hope that you're saved. And if you're not saved, you need to get saved. Because you know something? You're going to die one day. Or the Lord is going to come back one day. And if you're not ready to meet him, you're going to go to hell. If you don't get right with God. That's just as simple as that. I want to preach a message one day. This is it. If you're saved, rejoice. If you're lost, you're going to hell. You need to get saved. Amen. Let's go home. <laughs> it's just as simple as that. But I hope this morning that everybody here today is saved and washed in the blood of the Lamb. If you're not you need to be because you could take your last breath today and spend eternity in hell. Heavenly Father, we come at this time and we ask, Lord, that you speak to our hearts. Lord, warners of the activity that goes on in this world, you're not pleased with it. And Lord, I just pray that all these people that's in this industry, that Lord, we've got people working to get them out and straighten their lives up. Because God, no matter how low down they've been, your hand can reach lower. And Lord, you can change your life forever as you have many of them already. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. Bless this invitation for we ask it in Christ's name. Amen.